In this video, I'll be talking about my new and improved electron gun. Let's first look at the parts. Here we can see the filament, which passes an alternating current through it to heat it to the point where electrons are allowed to leave the tungsten atom's valence shell. The filament also serves as the cathode of the electron gun and can be held at a potential between 0 and negative 2000 volts DC. Next we have the anode, which is a loop of copper wire connected to chamber ground. This is the collector, which is not electrically connected to anything but the LED's negative lead. It is made from a sheet of steel. And lastly we have the LED, which stands for light emitting diode. The LED is connected to chamber ground on its positive lead, and the collector plate on its negative lead. The LED will light up when a current flows through it. Now let's talk about how the electron gun actually works. First, we have a tungsten filament which is heated with electricity. The filament reaches somewhere around 4000 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 2200 degrees Celsius. At these temperatures, electrons are no longer bound to the tungsten atoms. Then, a high voltage potential is created by a power supply connected between the filament and the anode. This electric field causes a force that accelerates the electrons. Knowing the mass of the electron and its charge, we can calculate its speed using this formula. In our case, the accelerating voltage is about 600 volts, meaning the electrons pass the anode going about 14.5 million meters per second, or more than 3 million miles an hour. And people say I don't speed. Anyways, after this point, the speeding electrons impact the collector, and from that point on basically act as if they were in an electrical circuit. One thing worth noting is that the speed of the electrons does not affect the LED brightness, only the number of electrons does. The extra speed likely just heats up the collector. This is the footage you saw at the beginning of the video, plus a little more. What I'm doing here is adjusting the beam current, which tells us exactly how many electrons are being accelerated. In this case, about one quadrillion electrons. Although this sounds like a lot, your cell phone charger flows more than a quintillion electrons every second. Here's another test where you can see a screen being lit up by electrons that have to first pass through aluminum foil. I'm not using a filament in this test because the accelerating voltage is high enough and the pressure is closer to atmosphere. Instead of electrons being donated by the tungsten filament, they instead come from residual gases being ionized. For the electrons to hit the screen, they must either pass through the foil or eject secondary electrons from the aluminum, similar to breaking the rack in a game of pool. One very fast particle gives some of its momentum to several slower moving particles. And finally, here's some slow-mo footage of arcs in the vacuum. This occurs when the electrical potential exceeds the breakdown voltage of the medium it's in. The noise you hear is the vacuum pump slowed down, but it is worth noting that you cannot hear the arcs. This is because they are still under a fairly strong vacuum, the same reason that sound does not carry in space. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing.